Good evening. Welcome back to the second episode of the exclusive interview of award-winning investigative journalist Tom Heineman. Thank you very much. Where he has exposed the high interest taking microcredit companies in Bangladesh and elsewhere. You were uh, able to interview Nurun Nahar, the daughter of Sufia Begum. Sufia Begum was the, let's say, a poster woman of Muhammad Yunus. He was telling this story to the world that he started Grammy Bank with $29 and he landed money to Sufia Begum, and Sufia Begum became wealthy, rich. She constructed a multi-story building, but you, in your documentary, actually got exposed. In Jombra, where it all started, we meet the daughter of Sufia Begum. Her mother was one of the very first loan takers of Muhammad Yunus. In Jobra, the fate of Mrs. Begum was not seen as a success. According to the local media, Sophia Begum died in deep poverty in 1998. During the interview with the daughter, a neighbor suddenly interferes. That that building belonged to someone else. You have even interviewed him in your uh, in your documentary, and you have shown the broken heart of Sufia Begum and her daughter Nurul Nahar have told you the sufferings they have. So don't you think, Tom? Uh, I mean, this was uh, a very big forgery of uh, of Muhammad Yunus telling the world a lie that. He has helped Sophia Begum, and this through this poster woman, he was telling the world that this is the success of Muhammad Yunus and Grameen Bank. But you have divulged, you have exposed the reality to the world that no, what Yunus was saying is all false. So don't you think it's a kind of forgery uh, of a person uh, who has been cheating the world? You know, there's, you know, there's. Uh... At that time, there were many people who, want, who wanted to listen to everything that Muhammad Yunus said. He was the star of the town. He could get access to any media in the world telling this story. But the poor people, they didn't have a voice. So I gave them the voice. Uh, I've done this in many of my films, give voice to the voiceless. I mean, millions of people were suffering from these high interest rates. That is absolutely, if I, I would never, ever pay as much interest rate as the poor people does. And why, why do we think that poor people is uh, is uh, better or anything? They, anyone can become Bill Gates. Why do we think that any the poor people can become Bill Gates? Just as me. So, so I gave voice to the voiceless. And um, we, of course, tried for weeks and weeks and weeks to get an interview with Mohamed Yunus. We, we tracked him down to a a big conference in Valencia in Spain, where he was receiving an, uh, yet another award. He must have hundreds of awards. Um, and we approached him directly with the camera on the shoulder and said, Mr. Yunus, and I gave him my card. He just looked at my business card and turned around and walked away. And then I had a long quarrel with his uh, press officers and campaign managers or whatever he is surrounded with. Nothing happened. For months, we have tried to get an interview with Mohammed Yunus in order to get some answers to the many critical points raised in this program. We finally tracked Mohammed Yunus to a business fair in Valencia, in Spain, where he is receiving yet another award. I've sent him the question six weeks ago, and I've kept on doing this week after week after week. Send also it, to Lamia. Send, send it to me, and I will take care. 
we arranged, we arranged, and then we, we filled it out on the right spot. Just he doesn't want to do it today. Let's uh, see a uh, good time. When, when will I get there? We have repeatedly forwarded our questions and put forward the criticisms of Grameen Bank. But neither Grameen Bank nor Mohammed Yunus wants to participate in this program. Yunus doesn't need a journalist, an investigative, internationally acclaimed uh, inter investigative journalist like you. Yunus needs a propagandist, PR, PR activist. So uh, yeah. that's why he was afraid of giving interview to you. And Tom, one more thing I would like to mention that you have done uh, fantastically in your documentary, that Yunus invited Hillary Clinton to Bangladesh, and then he named the village uh, Hillary uh, Model Hillary village. village. And yeah. they, uh, they were given the dream that this village will become rich and wealthy and happy. And, but in your documentary, you have exposed how big a mockery it was. I mean, Yunus not only has played with the poor people of Bangladesh, he has even played foul with his own friend, Hillary Clinton. I mean, he took her there and people were given hope. And even some people on your documentary said that most of the people brought into that area were from other places. They were not the locals. A few days after Hillary Clinton's tour, the villagers got a new American visitor. Development researcher Jude Fernando had heard about her visit. I was very curious uh, as to why that the, uh, uh, this particular person was, the whole Hillary Clinton was brought in. So I went and interviewed, the, interviewed lots of women. They say that, you know, microfinance was not very popular before she came in, and most of the women who spoke during Hillary Clinton's visit were not from the village. And uh, most of the women were uh, taken by buses from outside. Uh, obviously, they knew what exactly to say. Uh, so I think, for me, it was a PR thing. So this is no. something you have exposed fantastically. In this case, I would like to um, ask, are you going to, or are you willing to uh, come up with a new documentary that the way what the Nobel Peace Laureate Yunus actually has done with the poor people in Bangladesh. That could be interesting because researchers and scientists in the world field of what you call in broad terms microfinance, they admit that the impact on alleviating poverty is zero. I mean, this is not something I say. This is something that uh, academic experts says after years and years and years of studying this phenomenon, um, they say the impact is zero. So it could be interesting, like he received the Nobel Peace Prize in 2006. Uh, to some point, it's a mystery because uh, the, the UN year of microfinance was 2005. And I know for sure that, that the Clintons, they, um, they tried to nominate him years before that and also in 2005 but somehow it didn't work out and then uh, he finally received it in 2006 so that must be uh, that's 17 years ago and uh, so now if we go back to his speech at the nobel peace prize ceremony there should be no poverty in bangladesh for the last two years because as he said in 15 years, you will have to go to a museum to see how poverty looked like in Bangladesh. I mean, how naive can you be? Yeah, he told, the, as you mentioned, that he told the audience while receiving the Nobel Peace Prize that within 15 years, there will be no poverty in Bangladesh. But he received the Nobel Peace Prize 17 years ago. And, and uh, we are seeing that uh, people who borrowed money from his Grameen Bank are suffering. So Yunus has not only deceived the whole world, he has deceived those esteemed members who attended the Nobel Peace Prize ceremony. And in this case, I'd like to ask you, as you are a journalist, I am also a journalist, you know, one week when you say mafia, mafia, drug mafia, this mafia, that mafia, Yunus is a deaf mafia. 
He is a mafia who is receiving money from the international community as grants and etc. and then distributing it with a very high interest. And you have shown in your documentary that some people had to sell their houses and uh, whatever belongings they have. I mean, he made poor to poorer. Back in Bangladesh, we interviewed numerous families and got detailed information on how the microloan banks operates in the field. Can you read or write, madam? No, I don't know. 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 So how do you know what's in the documents? I don't know. 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 We also meet Hasira. She is struggling with a 30% annual interest rate on her loan from Grameen Bank. They go to their houses, collect whatever small little things, including their tin sheds, take that as their pawn or collateral so that they're forced to pay back. It's such a sad reality, but it exists and it exists to an extent which you can find out quite frequently in this country. Yeah, well, I don't use that harsh word as you use, like saying liar and mafia. It's, uh, you have to prove this um, beyond reasonable doubt before you use words like that. So I don't do that in my film. But one thing... I would like to ask you as a journalist and local based journalist is to follow up and investigate all the various companies that is owned by Yunus or controlled by Yunus. As you could see in the film, we, we exposed that they, he has multiple different companies. And there was this dispute where uh, he transferred money from, from Norwegian aid money, transferred it to another company called Grameen Kalyan. And um, that was causing an uproar in, at the embassy, in the Norwegian embassy in Dhaka. As you remember in the film, we exposed a lot of, a lot of secret documents that has never been brought forward before. And uh, this was a huge scandal in Norway because taxpayers' money went to, to save the world. And then instead, I think it was $100 million were transferred to a private company controlled and owned by Mohammed Yunus. And uh, the Norwegian authorities, of course, ask, what, what is this? Can you directly transfer back the 100 million US dollars? And after a lot of back and forth in the documents we, we obtained, uh, ending that he transferred back 70, 70 million US dollars for, for the Grameen uh, Bank uh, microcredit loan, where the 30 million, what happened to the third rest, the 30 million US dollars, we don't know because he, he didn't want to tell us. Um, his uh, uh, CEOs at Grameen Bank and the, his spokespersons and his press uh, agents, they didn't want to help us uh, trying to solve this issue. So we ended up saying where the 30 million US dollars has gone, we don't know. We can only guess. <laughs> 